Hello and welcome back to the Power Podcast with your hosts, me, someone else, and someone else. Oh, I wonder who they are. <gasps> Mysterious. Welcome, Sam and Alex. Hello, how, Joe. <laughs> t- how are you today? Uh, I am doing well, Joe. <laughs> This isn't flowing very well. But do you know what does flow well? Water. And today we're going to be talking about the only power that really matters when it comes to the terms of flow, which is hydrokinesis, a.k.a. water manipulation. So... Oh, Joe. Yeah, Joe, trans- this is new low. This, this, this yeah, is a new low this from is, this, is, this is really bad. Yeah, oh. a new, a new oh, low from Joe oh. about the intros. A new low intro, Joe. Right, let's go. I don't want to make this slow, so let's uh let's not. So hydrokinesis. Uh water manipulation. It's basically like telekinesis, only it only works on waters, or at least specifically it only works on the state of matter known as liquid. Uh Anything to say about it before we start? Uh, you know what? It is actually... You know, that's the thing. I found it quite difficult learning a lot of things. Uh, it's not one of my uh, top powers, but I do recognise it as being potentially incredibly OP. You know, it doesn't really we'll, get enough love, we'll get, but it's like... We'll get into, we'll get into like any, any of that. I just didn't know if anyone mm-hmm. had any like personal opinions on it before we actually talk about the actual mechanics of it. I think underrated. Is okay. my personal opinion, even by me, but like when I actually t- kind of think about it, it's like, yeah, it actually does have a lot of potential, you know, and it's very, very versatile. What about but you, it's, Sam? It get enough love. Uh, I would agree with Alex, but it depends on kind of the power rating for those who control it. Have hydrokinesis stronger, like if you're kind of weak with it, you're more or less useless. If you're incredibly strong with it, you are. Akin to almost a god, mm. or, or an actual god, depending. It depends on like how how far away you can control it and how much you can move. Is what I mean. Yeah. Well, get yeah, my big chest. No, absolutely. Well, there's there's two particular things that I'll actually talk about in this in this function. Uh, in this part here, uh, I, my personal opinion on it is honestly, I think it's an interesting power. I think almost any kinetic power other than telekinesis, uh, can actually be used really well, regardless of, regardless of strength or power. And it can be really interesting visually. Telekinesis, I feel like a lot of the time, most of its intriguing or interesting parts come from when it's at least medium to high level of power. I feel like when it's too weak, it's just silly novelty. Um, and I don't think it can be explored as interestingly as, well, or, or like elemental manipulations or other, other powers that are specifically only able to control or tap into other, other powers, other kinetic abilities. Um, well, we'll we'll talk about this then. Uh, so obviously, uh, the user the user can manipulate water or liquids, considering hydrokinesis, as in like, you know, hydrogen, uh, hydrogen. What is it? Hydrogen dioxide or something. Yeah, yeah. it's no, like di- a dihox. Is it dihydrogen Liquid. oxide or? Liquids, basically. It's, hydro- it's, it's two hydrogens to one oxygen. Oh yeah, so it is dihydrogen ox- uh, oxide. Yeah. It's not be scientific here. It's H two O. It's water. It is the substance H2O. that is seventy percent of the seventy percent of Earth. Either way, there are three different main things that I consider as downsides, or even, I guess you could say, like potential limitations that could be kind of interesting. Some are limited to the fact that they can only control water. Uh, the purity of water can also specifically affect the strength of which that they have on that specific liquid. For instance, some people can only control water. They could not control, uh, let's say, for instance, uh, cola, or they might not be able to control milk 
uh, others might only be able to control water that has not been affected by carbonization. So in other words, fizzy water, they might not be able to have as strong of control over it. Uh, Range is also a thing. Some hydrokinetics might have to be inside of the water or even touching the water for them to be able to control it, like as if it's an extension of their body. Others might not have that. And another particular one, which is actually kind of a weird one, I don't know if you guys have seen this limitation before, um, where the person can only control... Uh, the person can only control water in the aspect of its temperature. Uh, so it's, so it's, it's a hydrokinetic ability where they can only control mist, or they can only control ice, um, or they can only control water. If it gets frozen or if it gets turned into steam, they can't control it. So it's like their limitation is separated by the, by the specific state of matter that it is, like, the, you know... They can only control water. Now, uh, now there are certain bonuses that certain powers get, certain uses uh, of certain powers get, such as, I know, uh, water bending in, in Avatar. They get the ability to control steam and ice. In fact, they can actually freeze water and actually turn water into steam. Um, but yeah, so those, those are the sort of basic limitations. Um, I guess we'll talk about some interesting facets of hydrokinesis. Uh, I'll say I'll say we'll go to we'll go to Sam first and see if, see if Sam you have any have any uh, uh, ideas or examples that you can sort of reach out at like any unique ways that hydrokinesis can be or has been used before. Uh, I'd probably. For tabletop reasons, I will say a D and or a Pathfinder, one which is kineticists. They have they're more or less kind of similar waterbenders from Avatar, but they're slightly different. More or less, one of the key abilities they have is they can produce a weapon from the moisture in the air. Use that as, as if it was made of like, steel. It. I, more or less, they can just use it as a weapon and have near unlimited reach, depending on how powerful they are with it. Mm. Found quite good. Okay. You know, they can just and they can use that kind of like a wand to shoot out water. Uh, well, yeah. that's that's actually kind of interesting. Cause... And, and of, of course, the usual healing thing they can do with okay, water. Okay, yeah, no, that's that's, that's a, yeah, that's an interesting facet. Here's this, here's something that always people sort of get wrong hydrokinetics are not those that can summon or shoot water out of their bodies uh hydrokinetic is only the control of water not the generation of it however there are those that can summon water via via manipulating the moisture in the air and being able to basically dry out the entire entire like air just to fire out like a, a small hose of water um which is kind of an interesting sort of way of how that how that could work um but yeah like characters like i think uh i think you said uh yesterday rain from mortal Kombat. yes uh because he's actually a hydromancer not a hydrokinetic his ability allows him to basically through the powers of magic summon water and turn into water as well as control it so yeah he has he has hydrokinetic qualities but obviously the summoning water bit is kind of a uh, a thing that everyone sort of gets a misconception or a misnoma from which is that hydrokinetics can also summon water which is not the case i mean that that is one of the reasons why i said earlier that it depends on how strong you are is very much dependent on how useful you are as a hydro as a hydrokinetic. Oh yeah, definitely. Because because right, quite suddenly you're in the middle of nowhere. Do you have no water? And then what do you do? You're useless. Exactly. <laughs> Completely, exactly. utterly. Aquaman, but on the moon. What about what about you, Alex? Are there any interesting ways that you've you've seen hydrokinesis being used, uh, other than the ways that we've already said? Well, actually, 
actually, yeah. I mean, I, I just thought of someone, actually. I can't believe I've forgot, forgotten it. Uh, Lapis Lazuli from Steven Universe, uh, as well as the ability to fly, she makes literal water wings and gives herself the ability to fly because it it's... It's sort of like it's not really turning it into like a a solid structure, but it's just it gives her that ability because it still has mass, so she could control it, and she can also create blades with it by making it like really, really you know thin and spinning the water incredibly fast, you know, like a pressure hose. And hmm. she can also create you know living con- not really living constructs, but basically just like water puppets. So basically, they're like duplicates of uh, things, you know, made of water. She has to really extend her power in order to do that. But yeah, basically, uh, the gang in Steven Universe fight water copies of themselves that have most, if not all, of their abilities, uh, you know, for, for fighting. Uh, not their powers, of course, but you know, their their fighting skills. Mm. And, but they can't be killed because they're made of water. They just reform themselves. So I thought hmm. that was kind of neat. No, I think that is that is actually kind of interesting. I guess I'm going to say the one that I don't know if anyone's brought up, but I'm pretty sure no one's brought up. Bloodbending. Uh, ah, here it is. <laughs> and here's, here's where we actually get into the technicality ah. of it, which is... Hydrokinesis can either be ex- per- perfectly water or it can be any state of matter that is liquid. Um, and it can even be a specific percentage of the water in your body or the entirety of the liquid in your body, such as your blood. Um, and therefore you can control people. Hemokinesis is not going to get an episode of its own because we already talked... Uh, where we already discussed um, uh, bio- biological manipulation or biokinesis in a previous episode. So this is going to sort of be just like an, an additional point. Chemokinesis, the ability to control other people's blood. Very useful, very dangerous, very scary, and quite frankly is one of those things that can make water manipulation, blood bending, liquid manipulation, hydrokinesis, whatever you want to call it, Makes it so powerful or so OP, as Alex said, like it can become a very OP power. Just purely because of that. Um, there is another usage that I've also seen it being used for, which is uh, I've actually seen someone use the ability to sap the moisture off of someone. So they touch them and then they use their water manipulation to actually, or their hydrokinesis to remove the, uh, a certain level of hydration from the person's body and wield it as a weapon but that's also damaging the person the target and therefore like they can actually like basically mummify them or at least dry up their skin to the point of which they start cracking or peeling and like basically chapping them to death <laughs> imagine dying imagine like dying from being chapped to death you know, it's like, you know, if I was going to go out, I would be very upset if I was just chapped to death. I would just like, oh, I'm really thirsty. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, basically, no one wants that. I'm really uncomfortable. I'm very dry. <laughs> I think my legs just fell off. Uh, Yeah, I, th- I think that's... I think that's... Yeah, I think it's kind of interesting. I, I I have seen obviously the healing thing. I have seen uh water based uh flight. Like one particular one is actually someone creates a cloud and because they can control water, they actually like try to basically make it that like it's like they make the cloud super dense so it actually like forces their feet to stay above the, the main the main layer of like uh moisture vapor. Because obviously they can control their their specific manipulation of their water, so their water can actually still hold them or push them up over the surface, sort of thing. It kind of breaks quite a few logics, but I can also see why it could make sense in a sort of cartoony sort of style of way. Um, so again, multiple different forms of usage of flight, multiple different usage of healing and not so healing. Um, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna talk I'm gonna talk about this with the um, elemental manipulation uh, powers, which we will we'll, we will be doing for the next few weeks. Um, I'm gonna talk I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you guys to come up with the most and the least extremes. So I'm gonna say for for now, let's go with the the most extreme version of this power that you can think, and then the smallest extreme version of this power that you can think. So say for instance with Hydrokinesis, the most overpowered form of hydrokinesis you could think, or at least the most over the top scale that you've fiction or just in general, think. either just in general or in fiction. It's up to you. Okay. You want to go first, Alex, or do you want me to go first? I'll go first. I mean, I'll just go with the obvious one: the ability to control like sea levels of water, like to actually like create waves at a giant, like basically being able to create a typhoon like like a huge tsunami like mm. the shit i mean we've seen tsunamis you know uh the devastation that they cause in real life so one person having that ability you know it's packing a lot just uh, you know just having that amount of scale i would say that that's like the ultimate extreme of hydrokinesis mm. what are you sam Damn Alex going for the obvious one and the best one. The Poseidon level of just controlling all the water in the world. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, no. I had to see one. Say, yeah. If I had to go for one that was similar but not, I will go for I know, go for slight something slightly different. Um instead of just the waves in the ocean, the ability to almost control every single particle of H2O. As long as it's in something. Ooh, like, so even, like, even, like even, even in even plant just life. In everything. If just the particle mm. HTO. Therefore, like pretty much everything in the world has water in it somewhere. Most I mean, I mean, I say that quite a lot of things dope. But quite a lot of things do. So I Us guess you could plants, say I guess you oceans, could say for this limitation then. No. You could say. Oh no no no! You said you, we're talking about the most OP here. Yeah yeah be yeah. No but like the way that you, the way that you've explained this is like it. It's like oh yeah, the water particles within something. So in other words, not not water no, itself. No, no, I, don't mean, I don't mean within. With no, I don't mean within. I mean just. At so, all so in other words, every particles. water particle. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes, I did. Okay. It's meant more like. <laughs> I'm not, I'm more like also being, including. You know. You could literally separate a human being, like literally just separate, you know, the H two O particles from anything, and like just put, <laughs> you know, the mush on one side and the water on the other. You get like, a very basic H two O. You can not H two O, very basic structure as well, because you just see, oh, there's Pepsi over there. Oh, it's just sugar and horribleness. Okay, and then there's water. Okay. So. That, oh okay, that's okay. So you've gone for you've gone for that. So, so, so basically, you're saying, Alex, you're saying like controlling basically all of or a large portion of the ocean. And Sam, you're saying basically the ability to control any, if not all, uh, water particles, if not you know every every piece of H two O within your immediate vicinity or within the entire oh. vicinity of the planet that you're currently residing on, or something. Of I'm the actually, universe. In, I'm actually going to say. I'm actually going to say. Um, I'm not. I'm not. I could try. I'm not going to. I could try and one up you, but I'm not going to. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna just say the one that I. The one that I was originally thinking of was just the ability to manipulate clouds and his, or at least manipulate the entirety of the weather of the clouds just by the two basis of the density of them. Because if you could compact them into a super dense cloud, it would just start raining very heavily. And from that distance, all of the rain droplets would pick up a very great deal of speed, especially if they're heavy enough to be kind of like, I don't know, the equivalent of the size of like an entire bucket being poured out. That could do a great deal of damage uh, to buildings, infrastructure, you know, o objects, cars. Oh, pardon me. Um, and obviously it could harm people. And that obviously, just that alone. Or even separating out and actually causing droughts. Uh, not necessarily always doing the physical damage, more of the damage through lack of water, uh, through the through the concept of just moving the clouds away. Um, 
The other extreme that I was going to say is basically identical to both of yours, uh, which was literally just every liquid. Anything that is considered the state of matter of liquid, the user can control anywhere and everywhere. Um, so literally, if something becomes, you know, liquidish enough, then basically it's just they can control it. Um, again, that's uh, yeah, uh, yeah. like porridge or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I have milk. I have porridge. I have water. I have Pepsi. Instead of going, oh well, I'm going to separate the water. It's like, oh, okay, that is now all part of the things of my domain. Um. Uh, someone as, as soon as like a scientist goes, we've can we've can <laughs> we found a new uh, a new super heavy liquid or a new a new super liquid. Cool, that is now mind control. Uh, or even like someone just melts something and it becomes a liquid. That is now mine to be able to wield. So yeah, either way, there's there's a ton of different ways that you can do it. But yeah, either way, so we that's we've roughly come up with certain forms of extreme versions of them. Now I'm going to say extreme small ones, and I'll start this off. The ability to only control water in the forms of you can only control the moisture that is coming off of your body. So that's that's my that's my that's my one. Let's see let's see if you've got any extreme extreme little ones. Like little 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 powers. The smallest the smallest forms of powers that you can think of. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be smaller than that, by the way. It's just a, a a very weak version of the hydrokinetic ability. Oh, actually, actually, I've got one. One that you can't, where you can't move water or anything, but you can change its temperature. Like you can just like, if you set a pan of water, just uh, just down, you can just like boil it on its own. I'm going like, to say that's like, not yeah. hydrokinesis at that point. That's temperature uh, control. Dang. God dang it. I mean, uh, the thing is, though, isn't temperature just moving things very quickly? <laughs> yeah, just spinning it around really quickly. Isn't it just part even of it? Even, that, that, even, that, even that, that's by technicality. Again, you're splitting, glasses. You're, you're splitting hairs. Yeah. So, no. I'll think, of, I'll think <laughs> of a different one. I'll think of a different one. Well, actually, oh, Sam, but... super speed can yeah. actually still be gained through super strength. So, technically, if I've got super strength, I actually also have super speed because I can throw myself at great deals of speed. Of velocity. Exactly. I'm agreeing with you there. Therefore, so that, we agree so that, so that hydrokinesis therefore, can increase so therefore, so, therefore, Superman is actually a speedster. No. He is. He can fly. You can no, the fast no. The world goes back in time. No, right. Go on, go on, Alex. What were you gonna say? Uh, I guess like you could only like. Um, I was just thinking maybe you can, you know, with little things, you could only affect like one one drop at a time. <laughs> that would be the tiniest thing. It's just like tiny little bits of water that oh, you yeah? have. To you don't believe that I don't have that power? Let's go outside and it's raining and I just stop one droplet from hitting your hand as you're just drenched. <laughs> it's like cool, right? <laughs> I like yeah, that. Yeah, that's actually. like an immediate yeah, that's just an immediately useless power. I mean it's I mean it's still incredible. It's like, wow, you have the ability to, you know, drop one water. That's literally impossible. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you can't really use it <laughs> in any in any sense. What, what about what about you, Sam? I'd probably go for if you, you know the phrase "water off a duck's back." <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'd probably, I, go, I, for, I I'd probably go for that. Wherein what you do not get wet. Yeah, it just it just goes off around you, like it's just almost like you have a, it's almost like you have a miniature, like you have a miniature force field around you. The water just cannot pass. That's, That's interesting. It. But also, so, means that, well, the thing, best part is though, is if you ever go swimming, you just immediately float. fall to the bottom of the pool. <laughs> you just like uh, womp. I was actually, I was actually, just have, like, I was actually thinking that you meant, like, you just, you'd go onto it and you just float on the surface, like. Uh, no, it's too cool, because then you'd be like, Jesus. No, no, you just you fall down. You never drown. The thing is, though, you think is though, you'd choke to death because there's not that much oxygen around you. 
<laughs> just fix it but well, instead of dry neck well okay be I, I didn't necessarily think that you were gonna you were gonna you were gonna on purposefully make powers that actually on purposefully sucked because now here's my second part to this questioning <laughs> I mean, how how would you how would you add to these or make these powers somewhat interesting enough for them to be in or in functioning stories or at least f- or functionable for a character? Because the way that I was going to say it for mine is the character it, the character would basically be like constantly damp and have to constantly control the amount of water over the over the part of their body to be able to like then do certain things with it. For instance covering other people in water or constantly cover them covering themselves in dampness so that they can actually walk around in certain fires so they'd be like a, a sort of like a, a firefighter or something in other specific extreme situations they could potentially level up their power to such an extreme degree that they could actually fire off any uh, water like as if they're like little blasts of concussive force even maybe going as far as to actually eventually having it that like a single drop from their finger could actually fire off like a little bullet. But like again, they always have to be constantly damp or for for them to use it because eventually once once they fire off all of their water or once they use all of their water, they're they're dry. That once in other words, once they're dry, they have to go like soak up again. <laughs> Otherwise, they're useless. So they'd probably have to carry around a bottle of water. And again, it's not like they can throw it from the bottle, they'd actually have to pour it on themselves. So they're actually wasting quite a lot of water as well. Alright, my... <laughs> that is pretty funny. <laughs> but, I, you know my... I was just thinking through, throughout all that, I was like, damn, I have chosen like the worst possible power for this or ever, but I have a, I have a plan. As a great I think man... That's my line, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> As like you know, that's the thing. I if I could just control one drop of like any kind of liquid, you know, that's like the whole thing. It just has to be like one drop. I could be the most stealthy poisoner that has ever existed. Like I could literally just carry a tiny, tiny droplet of po- of the deadliest poison in the world, like in my pocket. Undetectable, just floating it around within my entire control, and then drop it into someone's drink on someone's skin, and no one would know. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it'd be relatively visual that it would be floating, but yeah, I I got I I got what you mean. I mean, you yeah. don't need to have a poison vial, and you don't have to worry about ca- like, oh, we're gonna have to search you because it's like if I can just keep it floating, they might not notice it. If I'm if I'm good enough with sleight of hand, they might not notice that it's floating in the middle of the palm of my hand. As long as it doesn't touch my hand, I should be fine. And then, I mean, <coughs> no go. On. You could always just go like full Magneto, where even just a small drop just through someone's head at high velocity. Yeah, and sort of thing as well. If I could control like the velocity of it. I could be like the greatest sniper. I just like and and also they'd be like, "Where's the bullet?" Exactly. You know, yeah, yeah. Happening. Well, this this is why this is why I sort of like the idea of of that, and this is another particular thing that we that I actually w- wanted to bring up is the the velocity of certain certain forms and techniques. Because some people think that hydrokinesis is it can also be all about volume, but because that water in its infinitely powerful pressure can also like with enough pressure, water can actually obviously like break. Uh, concrete, it can cut through steel, but it can also be fired through um, small, pro- you know, pressured hoses and actually tear paint off of, um, you know, off, off of metal. But it can also be shot straight through um, sheets of, you know, sheets of metal and actual like walls of concrete. Um, and so, like, having that uh, idea of just like a small droplet and firing it with such pressure that it just bursts through a person's body is. Terrifying. You thought you thought I was weak, fools. You underestimated my <laughs> you underestimated my power. Also, something else is that is crazy is that if you can get someone to even have a smallest the smallest droplet of blood come off of them, you're like, aha, I can control that, or even a tear, and then there you go. Even if someone spits at you, you're like, that's mine now. 
kind of gross, but <laughs> it could work. Yeah, you know, it would be amazing if you could, like, someone spits at you in disgust and you fire it back at them at high velocities so they've just been killed by their own spit. <laughs> Hoisted by their own petard. Actually, yeah, that's even petard. worse than getting. That's even worse than getting chapped to death. Like being being like gobbed to death. It's like yeah, not a terrible way to go. Especially if it's killed by someone else's spit. Ugh. Hmm. You know, what? It's, I think it's just because like you know, hydrokinesis has like a huge potential for being gross because like bodily fluids like can get involved and it's just sort of like. Ugh. You know, just the really gruesome deaths. What about what about you, Sam? Do you have any uh, like any ideas that, as to how you could sort of make yours a little yeah, bit more I, viable? Can't th- I can think of a fair few ones, of course. One of them is that no liquid can touch you as you want it to. So, like acids, various flammable liquids, various like dangerous things people throw at you will just kind of. Skim down you. Or mm. best part is, is you can make just a layer of water just surround you as you go into like a fiery building or something. So like you've put a layer of protection around yourself. Well, as you said, it's more like hydrophobia uh, powers. No, no. So hydrophobia. Can't, it's more like a like airproof shield of water, I guess. I, uh, I, I guess um, I guess that would help more in a I, flood than it would in a in a fire. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess. And also like maybe expand the field so you just have like this Ooh, just okay. have, like this area of non water around you. You could just walk and wire just fly kind of pushes away from you. That's that's be, actually quite interesting, yeah. Pretty great if you're just like trying to trial the ocean depths. If like looking for treasure or whatever. If you're a pirate, just think, well, I'm going down to the ocean today. Psh- the whole Drum. bar. Yeah, dry man. Well, our, our characters but no, are, our I, best just, part. I just realised that our characters are like the the, 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 like the peak opposites, like a damp moist man, man and, and dry man. Oh, moist Nemesis man. Is. <laughs> I bet, actually, yeah, my, yeah, just you trying to throw water, me just, well, I'm dry. <laughs> or, like, like, example, like, example of the pirate ship is, say, you're, say you're captured, you just Turn on your shield and suddenly, bam! The ship falls into the ocean a bit, possibly crashes, pop, possibly hits stones. Everyone's dying of drowning, and then there's you, just casually walking about. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, no, that's that's kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, okay. I'm gonna now Later. say like, I'm gonna now say like, how exactly do you think that you could upgrade hydrokinesis? Let's say, okay, let's say the bog standard is the user can. Control telekinetically water. Uh, they can lift it, move it around, hit people with it. Blah blah blah. Let's say you could upgrade it in one way. Uh, I'm gonna say a, I'm gonna say you can upgrade it in one way, but then you have to make a very odd inconvenience for it. Mm. See, I've got Do one. It's a difficult one, actually. Not, not that it's the obvious, because the obvious one is like sort of, you know, sort of. Oh, I don't know. I really don't know. You'll have to go first. I really don't know this time. So I might be stumped for once. <laughs> so the one that I've, the one that I've sort of gone for, is <laughs> the best way to put it is like. So the user has the user has an incredible range. Their range could be anywhere up to a mile distance. They can sense this. They can sense uh, their you know they can sense their liquid from up to a mile away, and they can control it from up to a mile away. Only thing is, is that it's a specific liquid, and the liquid has to be a specific type of liquid. So say for instance, like it has to be Pepsi, or it has to be Dr Pepper, or it has to be cream soda or it has to be something like that whereas it has to be specific or even having it that each different types of drinks grant the user different effects or even and this is the this is the coolest one i had the idea of it's hydro assimilation kinetic power where if you drank water for the next hour you have hydrokinesis if you drank milk for the next hour you have lactokinesis if you drank 
soda, you now have the ability to manipulate soda. And it's so on and so forth. That Like, orange juice, you can now control or the juice of oranges, and so on and so forth. But the but the problem is is that if you haven't drank in the last hour, in other words, dehydration, uh, or you just you just haven't drank anything, you're kind of limited. So specifically, the one that I'm thinking of is if you haven't drank anything in the last hour, you might the user might have to get go to extreme lengths. For instance, swallowing their own spit a lot would eventually mean that they'd eventually default to only being able to control their own spit. But they could potentially get away from that by drinking blood, or in a, in a really extremist circumstance, uh, kissing multiple people and using their saliva at the same time. Um, but yeah, that's that's possibly like the the weirdest way that I guess like you could go for it, where it's just going a little too extreme, but also adding a twist to it. I think I've got one, actually. Okay, go for it. I think I've got one. Like, you know how, like, one uh, one of the powers, at least in Anavite Tales, is, uh, you know, is purifying water? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and turning things in, in, you know, that would be my thing, which I could just do that, you know, to any sort of thing with water in it. Like, I just sort of get rid of its impurities... You know, and it becomes like just good old fashioned water. Mm. But the thing, you know, the downside would be is that, you know, until I transform mm. it into water, I can't move it around. So basically, there's no no blood bending for me, no, you know, uh, no diet coke bending for me. It would just be like I have to be able to like give it time to purify itself and separate out into being water in order to do it, then I could control it. Which I think would be kind of cool if, like, if you could expand it to, like, purify, quote-unquote, purifying blood by turning all of your blood into water. And or, at basically least just, killing, yeah. or at least just purifying their blood, making it a lot healthier. Yeah, that's, what well, if... that's true. That's one way. I you don't, you don't have to go for the evil option. Hmm. <laughs> Not where I was going with it, but yeah. No, no, I just I, I I feel like it's just the the usual stereotype that oh, uh, I'm gonna now transmute your blood into water. I think that's I think that's a joke that we've used so much, especially uh, especially when it comes to any of the Animal Tales players. <laughs> Everyone's asked like, can you yeah. do that? Can you use purify on on blood to turn it into water? <laughs> and the answer has always been no, not unless if they're dead. <laughs> But again, that, that's kind of a, a cool thing. Like, basically, you would have to give it a bit of time and, you know, an effort in order to do it. But pretty much anything that could be purified would be your thing. So even in places where there is no body of water, you could potentially find water. And hey, you could just kill someone and then purify their blood and use it. <laughs> oh, Alex, you and your bloodlust. <laughs> what about you, Sam? Uh... To be honest, I just I just thought of a kind of fun one as opposed to um, an amazing one. No, either uh, either one's welcome. What I thought of was you can make water, ling water, so to speak. So if whenever you touch water, you can make it so when someone drinks it, they get healed. However, also make it alcoholic. So you know the water to wine thing. More or okay. less, you do that, you heal people, but then they become intoxicated, depending so on how much they drink. Your hydrokinesis is, is is you can change the properties of the water. You can grant the water to have different properties, like almost like transmutation, but because it can heal, it's 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 less transmutation and more just like almost granting the special effects to the water. So it's still water, but yeah. it could like inebriate yeah. someone. Or something like making, that. Making like yeah. making it holy water. Like yeah, like clerics can do. Or except you also make it intoxicating. Okay, that's kinda cool. That is actually a really cool idea to be fair. Um I kind of semi stole it from a game. 
Less than Except Merlin. <laughs> no, I was actually going to yeah. say, I think two of the coolest parts about it is because of its versatility. Because again, water controls the flow of so many different things uh, that you well, it can be it can be controlled into into so many shapes and forms and sizes. And again, depending on the level of power that a person has, pr the pressure of even the smallest splash, like. I don't know, let's say, for instance, even the smallest glass of water could still be used to do all sorts of different things. I've actually seen one particular usage of it where um, someone had a small amount of water, but they said, oh, well, the thing is, is that water is one of the only things in the world that does not get affected by pressure because it it creates pressure. Uh, the further you go under the under the, under the ocean, so that this person was able to create a small amount of water, but he he could then do something called water pressure, where he would then put some water on someone, and it would then start crushing them. Oh wow! And it was just like it. it they weren't. They were. They were like in the middle of like no nowhere. There's very little water. This guy's th you know throws some water on it, hits them, and then suddenly just like crushes their chest cavities. And just bursts them open like a freaking crushed watermelon, all because he has the ability to make water as heavy as it would be. I think it's like ten thousand feet below, and that that, that is, is scary. That is scary. Like the idea of like, oh, this cu one cup of water now has the same exact identical density as it would be if you were currently underwater ten thousand feet, and that's that is cool. Uh, obviously, the the other ones that we've said before, the ability to change the temperature of it, or the ability to control other people's blood, um, even changing the properties of it, like being able to heal people. It, I feel like hydrokinesis is one of those ones where you don't necessarily have to change its properties to make it interesting, but there are a lot of ways that you can make hydrokinesis interesting. Just as we've said with a lot of powers, if you add another ability to it, it can become very interesting. Um, I think I, I don't know. I don't know if you guys. I don't know if you guys think about this like often. But I think the two coolest abilities to put next to each other would are either obviously the ability to generate control, or at least be able to cool down, cool things down, like as in being able to generate or manipulate ice alongside this power, or electricity. Because I think those two abilities go hand in hand so evilly. Or so well. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, anyone who played Bioshock, oh the joy of coating people in water and then electrocuting it. I think it needs therapy. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> I mean, I think you know, I'm creeping myself out these days. Like, you know, <laughs> I just the feeling of joy that went to, across my body as I displayed that. I was like, what is wrong with me? Oh, it is great. There's a level of catharsis. I will. I will say that as a as a member of the enjoys gameplay uh, club. I would say something as well. I think that you know, um, well, like with the temperature control thing, it would be nice to have like you know, uh, pyrokinesis with uh, hydrokinesis as well, just for like to have both of those opposing elements, because then you could have like then very you could... hot, you know, very hot water, yeah, as well boiling water, you know. You can you also know, uh, douse. You can also douse those who are, you know, on fire, or douse that that is currently set ablaze. And then, if things need to heat back up, you at least have that option. Uh, or even freezing things if you actually have the ability to, to control temperatures. I'd say. I'd say the ability to manipulate large spans of water is interesting because you, as I said before, you can either like just be super destructive, like Poseidon, like oh, I'm just going to crash everything, or you can just stop it from happening. If you could control the tides, that would be dangerous enough. But if you could control again how much moisture is in the air, how much humidity there is, how much, uh, you know, how 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 much shade is being given thanks to the lack of clouds or the you know the the abundancy of clouds and it's it's kind of that it's kind of that interesting thing of like you know you wouldn't need to basically be the god of moisture or the god of water to have that kind of power like or to have that kind of like dangers with that power 
But it is it is quite interesting to see all of the different ways that the powers can and have been and could still be used. Um, when it when it comes to the manipulation of it, because again, as as you said, either humans are seventy five percent water or the planet is seventy five percent water. So it's that thing of like yes, it's the it's the second most common element or state of matter in the entirety of the world. The second is gas, and then the third is solid. So, yeah. I, I mean, unless if anyone else has anything to say or to speak. Uh, no, I mean, I think we've covered pretty much, pretty much everything from it. I'm actually kind of sold on playing the single droplet assassin. Like, I didn't actually think that I'd end up like that. I thought, oh yeah, this is an intentionally weak and bad version of this power. But I'm like, I want to try that. I have ideas. Hmm. Okay. What about you, Sam? You sold on this power? I mean, I was sold on it long ago. <laughs> and played it for all of two sessions? Badly, because the character in me was incredibly personality personality lessness and no personality I, mean, I don't know about that the, the, their capability for destruction even without their powers was incredible very entertaining <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I will he defend was... fear I like I liked him a lot <laughs> will defend the living sea I mean I he had, he had I'm not even going to say I liked him now he's just boring to me I grew bored with him very quickly. I tire of you. My enthusiasm has dried up. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think when it comes to hydrokinetics, they are often seen as pacifist characters because a lot of people think oh I well, mean water, no. water water Not the ones a, I've seen. Well uh, well it's because a lot of people consider water to be the you know, it's it's the passive thing. It's the it's you know, it's not that da dangerous or damaging. And then when they finally show off their stuff, it's like, oh, that's you know, that's quite scary. Because again, it, you know, if you've ever seen any of this, any of the stuff like the fatalities that can happen in Mortal Kombat, or uh, you know, technically, if you also think about it, uh, Katara um, from uh, Avatar, also she is probably one of the the craziest like users of water. Because of how versatile she makes it, uh, even even removing the whole ice and steam thing, it is still crazy the amount of different th ways that she uses it, wields it, and uh, she, just... she literally breaks out of pr prison with her own sweat. Yeah, yeah, and oh, that's another thing. They use it to cut things, not just smash things. They use it to cut things, which is again incredibly useful and incredibly awesome. I think that just it's the misconception of it being like a passive sort of like chill power is uh, partly because of uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender, but also because uh, water, water, the element we kind of take for granted. We think of oh, nice babbling brooks or nice, nice calming seas and stuff that's in our minds. But you know, we see what happens when water turns against us. We just like we just see it like it's there. It's not coming out to attack attack us but if we get lost in the middle of it it's the most deadly thing in the world Unless you know we have no what was, see, what i'm was the it? exact opposite of you I've, I've seen enough greek myths to know water is not your friend <laughs> Sidon has made too many widows too many too many bad things have happened because of him and his ability to control the seas. I think I think I think you're I think you're the opposite to us though. We see we see either side of it. You are way too much on one side where you are like, no, 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 it's it's too it's too good. And it's like we're just like we no, like, not say it. We like I mean, to I, build the suspense I, I, here, Sam. <laughs> Yeah, but but you are saying how passive it is. While I'm going for the the idea that no, I've I've seen enough fiction to know that water is you're not the most bad element, but one of them. And that you it's, do not tempt people. It's one of those things where people water don't like, people. It's not easy for people to usually see how dangerous or deadly or versatile it is. 
Because we only use it for like really? one thing normally. Training? It, gen, gen, genuinely, no, but not all. Especially if you think about it in the in the in Avatar, because that they don't use it to kill. Because again, it's a kids show. They don't show it to all of its ma- major extents. If you had it where it's like I don't know a show like fifteen to sixteen, six, sixteens, and they actually like go full on like murder sprees. Uh, or fight without holding back. You then just people would then see that that usage of it being oh so different because it's no longer about like oh I'm gonna smack uh, I'm gonna smack people and cut metal or what whatever it's actually gonna be like. What happens if I just use the full force of this large amount of water to slice through the human body? <laughs> I mean, they kind of tease it a bit, like when they have the hammer episode where she actually does blood bet. Well, I mean, the the full part, the coolest thing that I think still sticks out in my mind in the show is when Hammer uses the flowers around her to take their water to use as a weapon. That's like just completely leaving everything, you know, dry and desiccated and dead. Oh yeah, she just, just kills have a, bit of a water. bunch of flowers. Well, actually, my my favorite one, my favorite one, yeah. like that is a really cool one. But uh, also, she she actually destroys yeah. a tree from doing that as well. Yeah. One of my favorite ones is actually the moment where uh, there's a moment where Katara actually um, it's it, it's raining and she she creates a force field where it's no longer raining and just all of the all of the ice droplet all of the water droplets then just turn into ice and she's just got tons of these ice needles just pointed at him and. What, what, all whilst underneath this barrier of water, and it's exactly that kind of thing of like I've seen that, and then I've also seen characters that can only like fire like single shot bursts of water because they build up the moisture in the air and fire it off at a single point, or uh, the ability to only like pick it up and splash it on things, and. It's incredible to see like all of the different ways that it can be used without necessarily shaping it into different states of matter, but being able to also do th- certain things like, as you said, like create a, a bubble of uh, of uh, of dryness because like you control all of the water, and as more water forms on it, you have more to control to create eventually a dome where it's just a dome of air, but truly all it is is that you are controlling water and shaping it into a dome that is like a shield against all of the rest of the water. And that's that's really cool. That's that's really cool. Um but yeah, you could you could drown people very very quickly with it obviously as he said like you could just have it where you just have a large amount of water and just or not even necessarily a large amount. Water, a handful of water. Hell just even that, it just, someone's, just just keep it around pipe. someone's just yeah, don't you have to go all the way down just keep it on that bit there just Stop it from being, yeah. yeah. Too much against that, can you? It is. It is a darker power it, it, when used it, when used against that. But the lighter side of it is is still the fact that you could also use it to basically, as as we said before, glide across, run across, walk across, or even fly across the surface of waters of rivers and oceans, which is really cool. Uh, you could also basically have it that like you could float passively on the surface of water or basically just create domes of uh, of water that again seal out, seal it out so that you can basically be your own personal submarine so long as you're able to well <laughs> survive long enough to get to wherever you need to get to <laughs> it's bad writing uh, <laughs> but yeah e- either way um i don't know has anyone else got anything else to say about this Watch Steven Universe, as, as I always say, to, <laughs> for Lapis Lazuli, because she's a good showcase of these powers. Sam? Ah, uh, Poseidon. Don't screw with people who can control water, especially if you're a captain of a ship. Fair enough. I'm not really going to recommend Edisist. anything in screw particular. With uh no, this has been hydrokinesis. Oh. This has been a little bit more of a tamer episode, I think this this time because we actually, I guess we've mostly agreed on most of this stuff. 
Can I recommend uh, something? <laughs> oh, whatever. What, what? What? Well, this isn't really the recommendations, but go oh. on. I'm mad. <laughs> no, Sam. You've You're made gonna... you've made your bed. Now continue to lie in it. I'm going to say I would recommend playing Pathfinder Kingmaker because they do have a cadet assist that does control water called Kalik. Yeah, well, there you go. And is the be- and probably the best teammate to always keep her in the party. <laughs> well, as always, guys, if you have enjoyed watching this or listening to this, because we don't have much but a, just a single frame, if you have enjoyed listening to this, stick around for more episodes <laughs> like this on the channel at Animite Tales. Sorry, uh, hashtag Animite Tales. Or just Animite Tales. Uh, I am at Animite Tales on Twitter if you would like to follow me or even listen to some of the different things that we have to say on Twitter. And we also do tabletop RPG sessions once every fortnight where we dive into playtesting sessions as we develop the game Animite Tales, a superpower tabletop RPG mostly focused around PvP style combat and certain mechanics so if you guys like the idea of that definitely check that out this has been alex and sam alongside myself thank you both of you for joining me yet again you're welcome and as you always so much and as always have a wonderful night ciao ciao for now bye See you in the future.